So on my transmitter there, you should be able to see link quality RSSI and um, the uh, power output. So this is on dynamic and go up to one watt. And I want to check out to see if I can take it and put it in my DJI rig here. Uh, you know, I love DJI for the video link, but the transmitter, I'm just not as used to it. So I really, on this quad, really want to get OpenTX on this. So I've taken the flat antenna and you can see maybe I've shoved it right underneath this antenna in here. See if I can show you that. So hopefully you can see it and I'll point where it's at on the video. And uh, so what I'm going to do today is take a flight and we have our beta FPV module with the one watt VTX and we're going to see how that does and see if I can fly everywhere I can normally with just video range. So let's get into it. Now I can see RSSI in my upper screen there and it ain't it ain't super high I have to say but this is I have DJI um, I don't get any warnings or anything so with DJI you can go pretty dang far I dread uh, telemetry um, lost lost telemetry, telemetry. I usually don't go out this far. I'm losing a little. So I'm not wearing my neck strap here, so it's a little goofy for me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, pretty good range there. I guess you guys can see what we're getting for uh, power range, power rating, and things of that nature. I don't want to bother people. Telemetry lost. Got telemetry lost there. Telemetry recovered. And recovered again. Telemetry lost. Telemetry recovered. <laughs> this is my back to it. Yeah, it's getting a little low. A little freestyle over here at the park. Yeah, everything's going okay there. All right, 3.5 volts. Now bring her back. But yeah, hopefully that gives you a sense of uh, what you can expect with the flat. All right, today we're gonna to be taking a look at the new Beta FP fleet or the V2 version of the Beta FPV light module, which is also known as the flat. As you can see here, this is the first generation of this type of receiver with the tower antenna on it right there. And then this was the first iteration of the beta FPV light or flat antenna. This one had an issue. We're going to talk about that in a second. This was version 1.0, and this is their latest release version 1.1. We're going to go ahead and put this to the test with our ESP board to see if the performance is there for no jitter, Packet rates are consistent, and also end-to-end -end latency is what we would expect from Express LRS. So let's get into it. So before we get into the testing results, you can kind of see it compared here against the original tower antenna receiver. And you can see just a little bit longer. But the big difference, of course, is the vertical profile of this. You can see, obviously, with that tower antenna sticking out, you know, that is susceptible, obviously could get broken off. I don't know how often that actually happens, but that is kind of sticking out of there a little bit. And then with this flat antenna, obviously that, you know, that's not going anywhere. That can take a hell of a licking and a beating. And just for a practical use case, you know, I took one of these and put it in here into my US 65 and got that all wired up. And you can see how that's kind of nice 
Obviously I have some Kapton tape there protecting the motherboard from it. But you can see how this is kind of nice not having a tower. How you can just kind of shove it in there and not worry about, you know, that tower antenna sticking out or anything. It's, you know, as long as you can just, again, it's just a form factor of shoving that in and it's, uh, you don't have to worry about the tower hitting things or breaking off or, or anything of that nature. So that's definitely nice. The original version 1.0 uh, had a issue with it that Beta FPV is standing by. And I will make a link down in the video description where you can contact Beta FPV if you do have this one and they will replace it with the new version, the 1.1 that's right here. Now, how you can tell if you have the old one, you can see right here on the upper left, right in there, it says V1.0. You can hopefully hardly see that. It's very small text, but that is the old version. Um, and that's how you would tell, just you'd see that on there. And then of course the new version here that has the V1.1 on it, and that would be the one you want. Now with the new version, there's improvements in range and the telemetry lost issue that the version 1.0 suffered from. Again, you can exchange your version 1.0 for the version 1.1 1 .1, uh, by contacting Beta FPV. In talking with some of the Express LRS devs, and then again, some of the testing that you can see out there by other YouTube content creators, you're getting about the same range as you're gonna get from this uh, tower antenna version. Uh, in these flats and really the benefit then at that point is just form factor so again if that's something you're interested in just a little bit slimmer form factor this is the antenna for you now when you receive this receiver it will be in the state where you can bind it to your express lrs module or transmitter just by going through the lua script now to put the receiver into bind mode what you have to do is power cycle it three times so normally when you have it plugged in you'll see it flashing just like this a single flash every i guess about a second every second, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, so everybody about half a second, I guess. So what we'll have to do is sour cycle. Now this is where it's starting to go in to connect to my Wi-Fi, or it's gonna make its own Wi-Fi, depending if you don't have that set up or not. But what we'll need to do is go ahead and power cycle it three times. So if you have it wired up, you could just plug in your battery real quick three times. And we're gonna power cycle it once, twice, three times. And then you can see that, that flash, double flash, double flash, double flash that's how you know you have it in bind mode and then from there we're just going to go into our radio with express lrs on it and we're going to go into the lewis script and come down to here and then we're going to go ahead and hit bind and as we do that you'll see this go from a double flash so i'll go ahead and hit bind and you'll see that that goes to a single flash and now it is connected uh, to this receiver. Now this transmitter even has my binding phrase in it. So it's bound to this transmitter, but I have binding phrase in this transmitter as well for other receivers. So it looks like it will work that way. So you don't even need to reflash it. However, if you wanted to put a binding phrase on it, this is how you do that. So we'll go ahead and pop into the Express LRS configurator. And if you don't have the configurator, I will drop a link down below where you can go download that. Once you have that up, all we're going to do is pick the latest release up here so that at this time of this recording is 2.4. And then we're gonna go down and pick the target for the beta FPV 2.4 gigahertz. And then down under here, it will be the beta FPV Lite uh, 2400RX. So pick that. And then we're gonna browse down to here and then you can make sure to check on this binding phrase and put in the phrase whatever you'd like. I'm not going to show you mine. Uh, make sure it's something private that only you know so nobody else is hacking into your radio signal. Uh, this is a really great feature because then if you put binding phrases on all your receivers and transmitters, whenever you get new equipment, you just go reflash it with whatever release everything else is on. So you might you know, be sticking on release 2.0 for a while and then after a while upgrade them all, whichever you prefer there and then uh, yeah you can do that uh, obviously other options you can fill out here as well you can see after it's not bound for a long time or if it's not connected to the radio what you can do is after it's powered for a while it will go ahead and go on to Wi-Fi and then once it's on that Wi-Fi network uh, down here under options instead of having to plug in your you know computer to your quad you can just go ahead and pick Wi-Fi firmware updates here. And then after you're plugging in your receiver for a little bit of time, you'll see it starts to do this rapid flash. And I don't know if the camera's picking it up really quick because it's a super rapid flash, but it's a really, really rapid flash. And then the configurator down here will actually pick it up. 
So you can see down here, the configurator has picked up my Express LRS receiver on my Wi-Fi because when I flashed it last, I gave it my home SSID and password to get on my Wi-Fi. And I can go ahead and hit select here, and then that will put it there uh, in here. And you can see now I can just flash your Wi-Fi. I don't have to plug my computer in at all and hit uh, build and flash, and it'll just flash it through my Wi-Fi network. So that, that's what those options are. Now that we know how to just bind it right out of the box to your transmitters, even with binding phrases in them already, you can still bind that uh, in that case, or you can reflash it with your binding phrase. Let's go ahead and check out the test results from the end-to-end -end latency and jitter. So in this testing, I used two transmitter models. One was the beta FPV one watt module that we used in the long range testing we just did there at the beginning of the video. The other test we used the same receiver, but then used the new beta FPV light 3 Pro. The first test here is just the baseline. So this was this T TX radio, all the stuff. And we did this testing before, so I just want to make sure the baseline was there. But this was the Happy Model EP uh, receiver, which uh, we've tested before and shown to have good results. Then I did the same test, just switching out the receiver to the Beta FPV flat. And again, you can see the same results. Now, then after that, I did a test with the new Light Radio 3, which has a built-in Express LRS module. And you can see um, a little bit better results on that test. So those graphs we just showed were the end-to-end. -end. So like when you move the stick, how long does it take before the receiver receives it? So you can see that was anywhere from two to four milliseconds, and in some cases up to five five or six milliseconds for a couple packets out of 500 that were transmitted. This next testing is talking about packet rate jitter. So the packets, this was at 500 hertz sampling rate for all the testing. So that means each two milliseconds, so every two milliseconds, it was updating where the stick positions were. It's getting that digital packet rate down to more closely match your analog, your fingers moving signal that you're inputting uh, to get the data off to the receiver. And you can see in here, uh, all, all the same, so these bigger spikes here are just when the trembler tree or sinking packets are coming back, but uh, you can see the difference between the EP uh, receiver from Happy Model versus the flat versus with the different transmitters all is in line. So I'm happy to say there's no anomalies there. So what's my takeaway with the light flat antenna receiver? I think it's a no brainer for anything that's a whoop. You are going to outrun your video before you outrun this, especially if you're pairing it with something like this dynamic beta FPV one watt uh, module here, where it can go for 25 milliwatts up to one watt, uh, depending on the power demand that it needs based on the RSSI and telemetry. When it comes to larger quads, if you don't want to deal with an antenna, I think it is an acceptable solution that you can use if you're not trying to go super long range. You can see I didn't have any range issues. The link quality stayed pretty good throughout. There was that one spot uh, where the fence was in between me and the, you know, was kind of going in between the trees along the roadway there. And my, I was faced away from it where link quality got a little low for just a second, but there was no fail safes or anything of that nature. Uh, you will experience telemetry lost about 800 to 1,000 feet out or 250 to 300 meters out. So you got to keep that in mind. But if you're going to stay fairly close, like within a racetrack or just some proximity freestyle, yeah, I definitely think that's an option. You can see, I, you know, I wouldn't do it any favors here by tucking this way up underneath. If I would have had it up here on top or something of that nature, which I could have easily just, you know, double-sided sticky taped here at the top, I would have got even more range out of it. Well, that will wrap it up for this review. Hopefully you found this helpful. I'll have links down below for this product and any of the products here I featured. So if you're interested in those, check out those links. Uh, they are affiliate links, so it will help the channel uh, by clicking on those and buying any product at the affiliated vendor. If you do have any questions or comments in regard to the flat receiver antenna or any other products, please don't hesitate to put those down below in the comments section. Thanks everybody, and I hope this helps.